We thank you for this awesome gift that joy is to us as a body. And we bless her today. And we receive the message you've put upon our heart for us this morning. And Father, we thank you that you will minister to us through the word and through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bless you. Okay. Um, so, no, I don't like that one. Let's use this one. Somebody said you were better than your brother, is that right? I will, uh, no. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who might not know who I am, uh, Michael, who is taken over as pastor, is my brother. Uh, I've come to Victory for several years now, so um, this is my home church, I love it here. And uh, you all are very dear and near to my heart. Um, so, Michael asked me a few weeks ago if I would like to preach on a Sunday morning and I would like to say that my first thought was kind of like quite quite Christian, quite godly. I was like, yeah, what a wonderful opportunity. That's amazing. I really like that idea. The second one, <laughs> I hate to say, was slightly on the, the left, not unchristian, but more of I remember a few occasions where my brother has used me as examples in his messages. And what a wonderful opportunity <laughs> to use the scripture, you reap what you sow. <laughs> so it's half Christian, you see. So I began to think of all of these stories growing up that Michael and I might be able, well, I might be able to use to demonstrate something of, of God. So the first one I was thinking about was, what about trust and faithfulness? There was an occasion when we were younger and Michael was out playing with his friend and they used to like to climb the tree at the back of our house. Now, um, he's going to get off lightly tonight. These stories are nice. Um, so, so um, yeah, they like to climb this tree and of course, annoying little sister, mum's told him he has to play with her. So <laughs> I go out, I put my balmy... Barbie, Bar Barbie helmet on, my Barbie elbows and knee pads as well, ready to climb this tree. Now I had to put my trust and faith in Michael to get me to the top of, I would say six foot, yeah, six foot tree? Or oh, nine or ten, wow well, it's getting worse. <laughs> um, so nine or foot, ten foot tree and Depending who you ask this story, we're going to go with my version. Michael did not tell me to hold on to both ropes. I dropped from the top to the bottom and went running into my mum to tell her that Michael had broken my trust. But then I decided that that one was a bit boring and we were going to go for a different one. So I thought maybe I could talk about the wisdom of listening to good advice and, uh, and ideas. So the one day, as you know, Michael works with Dad and I work with him sometimes through the holidays. We were in the garage and there was a cement mixer there. It was on the floor. And um, we'd watched this video of a guy who'd sort of like squeezed in like this into the cement mixer and they'd turned it on. And I was like, I bet I could fit in there. And Michael was like, no, you could I'm like, I bet I can. And he's like, go on then. And I listened to him. <laughs> And I managed to squeeze my bum into this cement mixer. <laughs> and getting in was fine, but getting out was another matter. <laughs> to which my dad said, you got in there, you get out, otherwise a docky wages. <laughs> that was his response. But in the end, I settled on my message title, which is going to be, yes, but what about X, Y, and Z? Okay, that's a bit of a funny title, but bear with me, it will all become clear. Now, Pastor Will spoke a couple of weeks ago about um, the plans that God has for our lives. And he used the scripture from Jeremiah 29 that says, I know the plans I have for you, um, and on and on. But I was sat there and I was like, God, I'm sure you told me to speak about plans. I'm sure in my heart I'd felt led to speak about the plans for our lives. And uh, Will had stole it. <laughs> But I was like, I was still, I still had it on my heart to talk about it. So I'm just going to come from a slightly different part of it. Because the plans of, that God has for our lives are so vast and so huge. There are so many. Um, so, as we heard, Jeremiah tells us that God knows the plans he has for us. And it's on the wall. Plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now in Psalm 37 verses 4, it tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
But how do God's plans become the desires of our hearts and this was something I was just trying to mull over and, and sort of really get some revelation on so let's turn to Romans 12 verses 2 and I believe we'll use this scripture as well but we're going to go over it again because there's nothing wrong with that uh, reading scriptures so Romans 12 verses 2 says not to be conformed to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But how do we renew our minds? Philippians 4 verses 8, don't turn to it, I'm probably skipping a little bit, just bear with me on this one. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things now when we meditate on the things of God that are true pure, noble, just, lovely of good report and praiseworthy we renew our minds yep. um, as it says in Romans 12 2, by doing this we prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for our lives so it's through that renewing that God's plans are, are embedded into our heart's desires um, now, that scripture again, let's read it. So Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Now when we meditate, oh no, I've skipped a bit. Now, the word delight, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm hoping I'm right, in this context is a verb. Anyone disagree? I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay. Now, in this context is a verb, which means, when I looked it up, to please, in brackets, someone. So to delight is to please someone greatly. When we meditate on the things of God, those things that are good and true, and all of those other things, we please God, because those things begin to influence our character yeah. and reveal yeah. God's heart to us. Now, the word desires could also be interpreted as the wants, the wants of our heart. But how do we know that the wants of our hearts are from God? Well, Proverbs 19, verses 22, in the message version, so I'll read it out to you. Um, we humans keep brainstorming our options and our plans, but God's purpose will prevail. When we meditate on the good and true things of God, it enables him to reveal to us and work his good and perfect plan for our lives. Is this making sense? Yes. yes, good. Right. It goes on to tell us how these heart desires will happen. Verse 5, it says, Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him. Commit means to pledge or bind to something or someone. And in this case, it's the Lord. And to trust, I love this, is again a verb, unless I'm wrong, correct me, which means believe in the reliability, the truth, and the ability of someone or something, which is our Lord. Believe in the reliability, the truth, and the ability of God. That's amazing. It is. Verse 5 continues and it says, He shall bring it to pass. We commit our way to God by renewing our mind and meditating on the things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely and of good report and praiseworthy. Which enables us to trust in the reliability, the truth and the ability of the Lord. Because we know and understand the goodness of God. Amen. Enabling the desires of our hearts come to pass mm -hmm. now what I did was I didn't do anything I don't think wrong here but I rewrote that scripture with all those added details in and it says this greatly please the Lord and he shall give you the wants of your hearts pledge and bind your ways to the Lord and trust in the reliability the truth and the ability of the Lord and he shall bring it to pass Amen. That's powerful. You know, when we read scripture, we can just read over it and we can go, oh yeah, that's nice. Like, I've heard that a thousand times. But until I went into it, I didn't understand the power behind it. 
because then I can trust in the reliability, the truth and the ability of God. Now, we get to the X, Y, Z. Yes, but what about X, Y and Z? When we uh, hear these things about the plans God has for our lives, sometimes they can almost just, like we hear them but they bounce off. And it's like, oh, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. But what about X, Y and Z? Now the example I want to use, and it happened quite not often in our house, was if someone was sat watching the TV and someone else walked in and stood in front of them, it was always, move your butt out the way, I can't see the TV. Right? Well this morning, I'm going to have a go at th moving three big butts out of the way so you can tell what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> right, so the first one. Yes, but what about X? Now X, this is going to help you remember it, X stands for. Sometimes it's extremely hard to wait for the desires of my heart. Wow. Yep. Yes, it is. It really is. We've all been there. But there's a purpose in the waiting. Now, in 1 Samuel, we're told about Hannah. Um, Hannah was a woman who desired to have a baby. And she tirelessly sought after God, but she had to wait. It didn't happen straight away. In 1 Samuel 1, verses 7, it says she went year after year after year and she cried and she wept. And this was for the desire of her heart. We don't know God's reason for not giving her a baby. Maybe it just wasn't his timing. But in her waiting, she discovered her purpose and Samuel's purpose. In her waiting, she realised what she was to do. And in 1 Samuel 1, verses 11, it says she vowed to give her son to God. Now, if she, if, she, if she said, God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you to serve you for all of his life. And could it be if God had given her a son sooner, she wouldn't have realised the purpose in her having a son. So, Samuel was essential to the fulfilment of the bloodline of Christ. Now, he wasn't a part of it, but he did um, appoint David, who was. And he played a role in helping that bloodline continue. And had Hannah, uh, Hannah the right word? Yeah? Hannah not realised that her destiny and, and Samuel's destiny and her purpose in waiting was to give him to the Lord, that bloodline might not have happened. We just don't know. But thankfully, she waited upon the Lord. Now, there, become, there became purpose in awaiting. And waiting is not easy. We know that. When we're quite impatient people, I would say. And we want things to happen now. And it can be very tiresome. It can be very heartbreaking. And it was for Hannah in the Bible. It says that she wept. But in that time of pain, we have reassurance in the word of God. It says to delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Hannah decided, uh, desired a child, but there was purpose in her waiting. And she didn't give up, but she continued to commit her ways to the Lord, as we heard is so important. She, it says year upon year, she didn't give up. Oftentimes our waiting is preparation for what God has planned. Good word. And Isaiah 40, we sung about it this morning, verses 31, says, But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. We have a promise in Jesus that through our waiting, he is renewing us, ready for our purpose. And it might be extremely hard to wait, but there is purpose and growth Amen. in the waiting. Amen. Are you ready? I'm going to kick that first but out of the way. the way. Now listen to my message. It's clearer now. That is put aside. Yes, but what about why? Now why in this case stands for you have no idea what I've already given to make this dream a reality. And you're right, I don't. But 
I'm putting in a butt. <laughs> investing in the desires of your heart is imperative, but it's making wise investments that's key. We read in Matthew 25 in the message version about the story of the talents and I'm actually going to read the whole of this out so if you would like to turn with me I am going to read from the message version but it will you can still follow along if it loads so this one titles it the story of the investments it's also like a man going off on an extended trip he called his servants together and delegated responsibility. To one, he gave $5,000. To the other, 2000 And to the third, 1000 depending on their ability. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work, doubled his master's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole, carefully buried his master's money. After a long absence, the master returned, um, and met up with those three servants and he settled with them the one gave five thousand dollars showed him how he had doubled his investment his master commanded, uh, commended him good work you did a good job from now on you will be my partner the servant with the two thousand showed how he had also doubled his master's investment his master commended him good work you did a good job well from now on you will be my partner. The servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways, that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done was invest the sum with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of the play it safe who won't go out on a limb. Throw him into utter darkness. Looking all that bit. Right, okay. So, <laughs> in the New King James, it says, at the part where the servants are giving what they've earned back, the, it says in the New King James instead, the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over the few things. I will make you ruler over many more. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. It is our responsibility to invest in our dreams in preparation. Very good. Yeah. It starts where we're at. Now, Will's spoken about it this morning. I was sat there and I was like, Will, stop talking, please. <laughs> because he said that his heart's desire is to preach to the nations. And what Will's done is he's been faithful currently in the church and he's served with what God has given him to look after now in preparation for the desire of his heart. Very good. And it's true, we have to work with what we have now in preparation. For anyone who's in the worship team, we invest in our giftings, we spend time practicing, or at least we should, but we do. <laughs> and if you desire to preach, then you need, it is your responsibili responsibility to invest in that also. Now that may be the development of your own knowledge in the word, or it could be leading a small connect group, who knows? But if the desire of your heart is to run a ladies' ministry, a men's ministry, I don't know. We all have different desires on our hearts to be parents. Invest in that desire now. By committing your way to God and meditating on the things of God that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, and of good report and praiseworthy, and he will bring it to pass. Yeah. By committing your way to go, oh, we said that. Part of the purpose in waiting is to enable you to invest in your heart's desire. Mm -hmm. Also, part of investing in your dreams is seeking wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Someone who can support and join together with you to, to pray for your desires. Now, everyone remembers, well, some of you might know the story in the Bible about Joseph, and he had dreams. He had dreams that came to him in the night and then he'd run out and he'd tell his brothers and be like, this is my dream. And then his brothers, sorry, <laughs> I don't quite know what that was. Go for it. 
I'm going for the uh, musical version, right? Um, <laughs> but his brothers would be like, whatever, like, we don't want to hear that. We are jealous of what he was saying. And it wasn't the right person to tell the desires of his heart to which had influence on their decision of the way they treated him. They were the wrong people to tell at the end of the day. And Proverbs 19 verses 20 tells us to listen to the counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Yeah. Verse 21 says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. Being wise about who we seek counsel from and praying together brings strength and agreement for one another and invests in your heart's desire. Amen. 1 Thessalonians verses 5 to 11, uh, 5, 11 reminds us to encourage one another and build one another up. And verse 17 says pray without ceasing. So invest in what you have been given currently for the future desires of your heart and invest in prayer independently and with wise counsel. Very good. Very good. That's but number two kicked. Okay? <laughs> now we're coming on to but number three. Yes, but what about Z? Now Z, in this case, stands for I feel like my heart's desire is zapping the life out of me. And sometimes it can really feel like that. But part of seeing our heart's desire come to pass is character building. That wonderful thing that we all love. <laughs> and it can be a very painful process. But it's necessary to the fulfilment of your heart's desire. Now, I listened to a message by uh, Charlotte Gamble. She's the uh, preacher, at, uh, the pastor, sorry, at Life Church in Bradford. And she was talking about learning to bend rather than snap and this is a really important thing that we could all do with learning in certain areas she spoke about the importance of identifying those areas in life that we snap and working on them to make them bend so that we can work on through those areas enabling us to learn to bend rather than snap maybe part of our character is still having that snapping point that needs dealing with before you will be able to see your heart's desires fulfilled if you think this may be you seek God go to God and if you're not sure what your snapping point is yourself ask him he'll identify it and then work on those points that are causing you to snap and instead ask God for the grace to bend Amen. Similar, if we try to stretch before we're ready, we snap or we snap others around us. And that's key. There's a story I'd like to tell about mine and Michael's growing up again. <laughs> of an occasion where Michael was trying to be maybe a bit bigger than he was. And um, he liked to ride Dad's bike. And it was like up here and he was like down here. And at the back of our house was an alleyway. And around this one corner, we both took it at the same time. And Michael, not being quite ready to stretch up to the big bike, wobbled. And I wobbled with him. But I wobbled into nettles. And I got stung head to toe. Now this would have been okay. I'm just adding this in. This is not part of the message. It would have been okay, apart from the fact that I was going to a birthday party that day and my mum dipped me in vinegar and wrapped me in bandages <laughs> and I was a mummy on the bouncy castle. <laughs> like, it was not a good look. But anyway, the point of that story is that Michael wasn't quite ready to stretch up to that big bike, so in that case, it, there was a snapping that took place and he might not have got hurt, but I did. And sometimes we need to learn that we need to take time to character build so that our snapping doesn't happen and it doesn't affect other people, but we learn to bend. Very good. Very good. Now, in, uh, through committing our ways to God, we learn to become more Christ-like as we meditate on him. Now, in 1 John 2, verses 6, it talks about how a person claims to know Jesus, they walk as he walked. 
This is all part of the waiting process and the development of our character. I'm going to read this bit off because I won't do it justice if I don't. It may be a harder part of the process by renewing our mind, standing up, but by renewing our mind and standing on the word, we move from a place of feeling like our character is uh, character building is a zapping our energy to a place where we know this process is supporting our development to help equip us for where we are now and where the future desires of our heart are leading us to. That's the third but well and truly kicked. Now can you hear what I'm saying to you? God has a plan for your life and it is the desire of your heart when you meditate on the good and perfect things of God. So in closing, I'm a bit early but never mind. In closing, renew your mind on the things of God and his characters. Find peace and know there's purpose in the waiting. Yeah. Invest in what you have, trust, you have been trusted with currently, which will help build your character in preparation for the future desires of your heart. Seek wise counsel and pray independently and together. And finally, identify your snapping points so that you can learn to bend instead of snap. This way, you will see God's plans become the desires of your heart and see fulfillment on those desires. So turn your X, oh sorry, your yes, but X, Y, and Z into yes, but I'm learning P, I, C. Purpose, investment, and character development. That's yeah. it.